The SAT is like a match. The MCAT is also like a match, except the match caught your room on fire. You're on fire. Your house, your house is, on, is fire. on fire. And everything, everything is just is fire. Just fire. That's how my friend Stephanie Brooks on Quora says it. And while she might be exaggerating a little bit, she's kind of right. I took the SAT, what, like four years ago now. And I remember being in high school and wondering about this mysterious, mysterious. MCAT exam that I knew I needed to take to get into medical school and just wondering how hard it was. Well, fast forward, you know, to a year ago, I took the exam finally and it was really hard. Let me tell you a story to illustrate this. So my freshman year of college, about three years ago now, I remember getting an email um, saying my university was offering free practice MCATs. So me, being the hardworking and dedicated freshman that I was, was like, why not? I'll sign up, I'll give it a shot. Oh boy. So on a rainy Saturday morning in 2018, I remember walking to the lecture hall to take this practice MCAT exam and thinking to myself, I've taken the SAT before and I did well, so I should be able to do decent on this one. That, that's really funny. So I took this test, you know, the whole seven and a half hours worth of it. And let's say this, never before have I been so humiliated by an academic test ever in my life. No, but seriously, like it looked like a foreign language. I remember seeing graphs and passages and just thinking, what is going on? <laughs> I actually remember, I was talking to one of my senior friends during the break between the first section of the MCAT and the second one, and I was like, boy, that biology section was hard. And she turned to me and was like, Arvin, that was the chemistry and physics section. At that moment, I should have walked out, but instead I decided to enlist myself in more pain and sat back down for more misery. I don't remember exactly what I got on it, but I'm pretty sure it was like in the lower 20th percentile of that exam. So yeah, while I thought that I was a good test taker, the amount of sheer preparation you need for this exam is no joke. Like you know those people that roll out of bed and take the SAT and score like a 99th percentile without even working on it? Yeah, that's not, <laughs> that's not happening for the MCAT. But interestingly, there are similarities, but before we get into more of the similarities and differences, I just want to give a quick overview of both the SAT and the MCAT. All right, so the SAT, it's the exam you got to take to get into college. It runs about three and a half hours and it tests critical reading, math, and writing skills not content knowledge per se. It scored out of 1600 points with a section for math and a section for evidence-based reading and writing, each section being 800 points. Now the MCAT, this is the exam you gotta take to get into medical school in the United States and Canada. Takes a brutal seven and a half hours of total seated time to get through this test. It tests your knowledge on physical, biological, social, behavioral, uh, psychological sciences on top of verbal reasoning and critical reading. That's a lot of knowledge. It scored out of 528 points with four 132 point sections with really long names, but I'll put them on the screen right now. Cool kids just call them chemphys, cars, biobiochem, and psychsoch. So similarities, there aren't many, but you might have realized they both test verbal reasoning. You know, you have the evidence-based reading section on the SAT, and then you have the car section on the MCAT. So you might be like, Arvin, so if I did well on the reading section of the SAT, then I'm good for the MCAT, right? No, but kind of. It's pretty well established that like verbal and critical reasoning skills are very helpful on any kind of standardized exams. And if you're able to do well on you know that reading section of the SAT, some of those skills might transfer on into the MCAT. Verbal reasoning in particular is very important for the MCAT because while it tests your knowledge of the different sciences, it tests it using passages and it requires you to critically read those passages and apply your knowledge to answering the questions about those passages. So doing well on SAT reading can start you off on the right foot when you start preparing for the MCAT. And yeah, that critical reading skill is where the similarities between the SAT and the MCAT end. It's all differences from here, guys. Even comparing the reading comprehension section on the SAT to that of the car section on the MCAT, they are still pretty different. The SAT reading pulls passages from prose, natural and social sciences, the humanities, and even has paired passages. While the MCAT car section has a 50% split between humanities passages 
and social science passages because there's already science passages in the other sections of the MCAT. The SAT reading section is a total of 65 minutes with five passages and 53 questions, while the MCAT is a total of 90 minutes for nine passages and 54 questions. So the MCAT car section tests your stamina way more than the SAT section does, and it makes a huge difference when you're going through this section. There's also a significant difference in the complexity of the passages, right? The MCAT passages tend to pull sometimes older passages with weird rhetoric in the text, and it can be a little bit more confusing sometimes. And while there's similar questions about, you know, the author's purpose, maybe their tone, the main idea, things like that between between both the SAT and the MCAT. I would say the MCAT takes it further by testing your ability to apply the knowledge in the passage to kind of extrapolate on the questions. And these questions are called reasoning beyond the text. And even with these harder questions, you have less time to answer them because you have to go through the passages too. Pause. This might be a little bit confusing, so let me pull up an SAT and an MCAT reading comprehension passage and just tell you about the differences between the question types that I see. Okay, so I think this is an official SAT practice exam that we have here. I'm not gonna really look at the passage, but one thing that I want you to look at when we look at the MCAT questions is the complexity of the questions, which is one thing, but also that those questions make you infer beyond the text a lot of the times. With these questions, what I'm seeing is they're mostly just asking about the passage in particular, right? This is asking about the central claim of the passage, or this one is asking about, you know, something that happens in the passage. Meanwhile, for the MCAT, what you'll see is that there are some questions that make you think beyond what is just in the text. All right, so this is a practice MCAT passage, and we're gonna ignore the passage itself and just look at the question. This question is one of the main differences between the SAT reading comprehension and the MCAT reading comprehension in that it's asking you to use the passage to reason beyond the text, which is something I didn't really see on the SAT. I mean, let's read this for example, right? So we're looking for something that is the least similar to this thing that was discussed in the passage. And all these answer choices are something that is not in the passage and using the kind of context clues in the passage, we're supposed to figure out which one of these is similar to that, which I think is a little more challenging. But yeah, just looking at the answer choices themselves too and the questions, there's just a lot more there than on the SAT. Another difference is that the MCAT tests your content knowledge while the SAT more so just tests your skills in reading comprehension and math. So hypothetically, a high schooler can roll out of bed one day with zero preparation for the SAT, take the exam, and get a perfect score as long as they know how to do math and critically read. <laughs> Meanwhile, if someone that was trying to take the MCAT did the same thing, they would be largely disappointed. Oh, you want proof. Let's take a look at this bio biochem passage and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so this is a little bit more of an advanced passage, but we're not going to actually look at the passage. I just wanna show you these question types. So let's read the question real quick. First, we need to point out, okay, they're asking you something about this IDH mutation that's in the passage. So you're gonna to have to understand that. On top of that, you need to understand these answer choices, right? So there are electron donating molecules and electron accepting molecules. And this is something you learn in biochem, and it's something you learn about the different types of molecules that are either electron donating or electron accepting. So even in order to answer this question, you might understand the passage, but if you don't remember what those molecules were, I think it's like NADH and FAD and those kind of things, you're not gonna be able to answer this question. This is looking at the next question. It's again, talking about genetic mutation in cell types. And so you need to understand the differences between these cell types in the nervous system, which makes it really different. So yeah, you're gonna spend a lot more time prepping for the MCAT because you need to have a content review phase where you just make sure that you remember all the content. And then on top of that, you're gonna have to have a phase where you just do practice questions in order to know how the MCAT itself works and answer the questions to get you the points. I took the SAT like four or five times and studied and prepared a bunch, but I took the MCAT only once, but I can say that I spent more than double the time studying for the MCAT than I did for the SAT. That's another thing. You can take the SAT as many times as you want and send the scores that you like and even super score your best sections. In contrast, you wanna take the MCAT only once because admissions committees can see every single MCAT attempt that you've done and it's a huge time commitment. Worst of all, there's no such thing as super scoring on your MCAT. Let me play a sad song for you on the world's smallest violin. 
Another major difference is the timing, right? So like I said earlier, the MCAT is a seven and a half hour total seated time exam. I think that's a whole day of high school. As you do more practice, you'll get more used to this kind of extended time period. And honestly, as you continue in medicine, you're gonna have exams that are similarly as long. But yeah, these are pretty different exams. It's important to realize though, you're taking these exams at very different points in your life you know, one during high school and one during college or later. And while this exam sounds like a mythical, unconquerable beast as a high schooler, as time goes on, it'll make more and more sense. So if you're in high school, just focus on getting your SAT done. And if you know that you wanna be a doctor, then check out my video on what you can do in high school to make your journey easier. Spoiler alert, studying for the MCAT is not one of these tips. If you're going through the MCAT right now and was just curious, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but you can check out this video here with some of the things I wish I knew before I took the MCAT, as well as this video for free MCAT resources. The MCAT is honestly in a class of its own, but the way medicine works is that each exam is a little harder than the next. So right now as an incoming medical student, the next exam that I'm looking at is the United States Medical Licensing Exam Step 1, which is an eight hour exam testing your first two years of medical school. But we'll worry about that later. Thanks for watching. You got okay, this. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is how many times it took me to get that intro right. It was worth it though, right? Yeah.